Hello everyone, I am Tessellating Hexagons, and I am very surprised that my batteries have lasted this long, considering I was griping about them two episodes ago, and each episode's half an hour long, and they're still going. So, in the last episode, th this is another Code R, by the way, in the last episode, we found out some more about Matthew Crusoe, we had our next objective, and now this dog is being an ass. So, it won't let us pass, but it also won't pay any attention to us. Why can't we just ignore it? Why can't you just... What? Oh, there's... Oh! I know what that is! She's saying something, and it's pink, and it looks kind of like a, qua a rose quartz gem from uh, from Steven Universe. But no, she's just identified it as, indeed, a pink music player. So, like the one that we have, but pink. And the dog wants it, and apparently also, I believe that's Elizabeth's one. And of course, if we give it back to her, she'll just accuse us of having stolen it. She won't be like, oh, thanks for finding this thing that I wanted. Well, push it to one side, I'm telling you to... Fuck a tea. Okay, so we've established that we can't do this then. So, we need more people later then. Is that what you're establishing? We need to get some more people in our party and come back. Now, can we go now? Thank you. Yeah, I get the feeling, I don't remember for certain, but I get the feeling Elizabeth is just going to be all arsy about... If we find that and give it back to her, she will be complete... Like, on a scale of one to arse, she will be very arse about it. Now, we're told not to go this way. I forgot about those screen transitions, that is actually rather cool, that's pretty cool for shorthand for travelling a long distance, that's what that indicates on the map down there, you see the, well I can't point at it, but the, the dotted lines, it's, it's like in um, in Master Quest, when you go through a tunnel that that fades to white, then that that's shorthand for, you've travelled a really long fucking way, and there's another rainbow stone, you take a photo of that, it'll do the, the rainbow effect that showed off in the other episode, don't know if we need to, but it, it, I suppose it's worth showing off, and of course the mind goes, yes I can see what it says. Yeah, but how did we actually, like, the name Lawrence, how did we come to the conclusion that it should be spelled Laurence, and then also, are you going to take this or what? Okay, apparently that's too unhygienic. And camera that shit so that we can see the rainbow stone, and by the way, the das is making noises because of the camera -y stuff. I've forgotten what I was saying. But, yep. Sure enough, that does the rainbowy thing as well. So, same stone. I imagine that's fairly obvious, but in case we needed proof that that's a thing, that is indeed a thing. Oh yes, Lawrence. But for, like, I have no problem with the name itself. It just seems a bit... Like, how do we come to the conclusion that it should be spelled that way? Can I look at the camera, please, just to prove that I've acknowledged its presence? Apparently not. It's one of those names, like... That looks so cool! Just... Just an observation. How did we get Larry from Lawrence? And I, I could make a reference to that one Tumblr snack video with the, you know, how in hell did you get Dick from Richard, you ask him nicely. I've already made that joke in in this series, I think. Oh, we have to check out the bag first, so... We were told, we were given an objective, and now we're doing everything in our power to not follow that objective. Uh, but yeah, so, Larry from Lawrence, uh, there's another one that says something like... N no, I, I think... Babs from Barbara, it does sound very dated, but it kind of makes sense. Um, Betty from Elizabeth, I suppose. You just said! Thank you! Little Miss can't make up your ass mind, as opposed to your mind's ass. Huh. Anyway, we're here, the ruins of the villa. Oh, we're gonna have another task puzzle! I love it! Are you gonna make a noise, we remote? Because I'm holding you right next to the microphone. Come on, don't make, don't make a fool out of me. Come on. Any chance? No? No noise whatsoever? Please? There we go! Thank you. I, that was really quiet, but it was right next to the microphone, so hopefully you heard it. Oh wow, it's almost as if it's the same design of lock that you saw the first time. Holy shit, you are a bit slow on the draw. Task puzzles. Fucking love them. They are so brilliant. You will see how good they are later in the game, but they just I like them. So, pointing at the screen, you have to do the above whilst on the screen. And so this is a bit different. We've got half ab minus plus. You have to press them both at the same time. So that, that's kind of an introduction to 
task puzzles not just being inputting a simple combination of buttons, but having to think outside the box a little bit. Like, that's an introduction to it's not just one button press. There's, It's only going to get more complicated than that as the game progresses. And that is so brilliant! Like, it's setting you up to realize that the task puzzles are only going to get harder and more complex in the best kind of way. It is beautiful. Just just wait until later in the game. There's some really clever stuff they do with it. It's, it's funny how I simultaneously remember loads about this game and also almost nothing about it. Which, considering the another device pertains to memory, that's kind of hilariously ironic. And what is this? Oh, sheep! I was going to say, is it sheep music? Yes, it's sheep music. It's her sheep music. You're going to have some sort of flashback about something that you owned, like, this time yesterday? Well, just because our bag was here, that doesn't mean that that everything he said was the truth. Because we established in the last episode that, that Matthew may or may not be lying, but he claims he's here because his father was a rich man who was kidnapped five years ago, and he can't let go of that. And another flashback! Oh yes, firmly grasp that knocker while making eye contact. Completely killing the mood, I know. But yes, it's almost as if that knocker was on the currently burnt down house. Never would have guessed. That's a nice earring, by the way. I, I would wear that. But yeah, so that, that, that's, that's, that's some lovely knocker action going on there. If this is the first video you've seen by me, yes, I am kind of this bad. And once again, brought back to reality, despite the fact that there was nobody here a second ago. Oh, it's you! I was fully expecting it to be Ranger Asgore behind us, like, Yo, what happened to don't fucking come here? Your white-haired dildo. And see, there we go. We trusted you all along. Oh, wow. You're... Well, what's the difference? We came to verify. It doesn't matter. You see? You see, you are... You are no better than us. Or at least what you've accused us of, so... Ha! Little shit parcel. <laughs> Lobotomized ass weasel, that's what you are. So, whether or not we actually believe you as immaterial, we're going to tell you that we believe you, and now we're kind of forcibly coercing you into believing us that we believe you when we don't. So yeah, how did you get in here? Did you use that ID card of yours again? Oh, you climbed over. It's almost as li almost as if he's not trapped within confines of video game. I apologise to everyone I offended with that accent. And for the umpteenth time, we're going over the events of the first 30 minutes of the game. Well, it makes sense because she'd have to fill him in on everything that's happened, or she wouldn't have to, but it makes sense at this point in the story, I suppose. But this... In the Touch Detective games, they'd just fade to black and say explaining and then cut back in once it's over with, and that is a bit more clever than what they're doing here. I mean, this, as a visual novel, makes sense, but as a game, a little bit repetitive. I suppose it's convenient that that he turned up, because otherwise we would have been trapped in that flashback forever, because clearly, Ashley can't come around from flashbacks without someone shouting at her face. And so if we're ever alone, by ourselves, no one else around, and we have a flashback, then we're as good as dead. And once again, we're seeing stuff. I, I, I could, I could. That was that was weird grammar. You are not a native English speaker, good sir. I could cut this out and just cut ahead to the point where they actually start saying relevant new stuff. But a, this is character development, and two, that would detract from the experience and reduce this from a let's play to a Markiplier video. I am still slightly salty about his treatment of Funny Pop. A lot of stuff that he does is good, but I. I do have some opinions about people who claim to make Let's Plays, like like him and, and PewDiePie. PewDiePie's a lot worse for it, though. Where they claim it's a Let's Play, but actually it's just a look at me reacting loudly while I chop up the footage of, of a game beyond recognition. Now, that seems more plausible because why would you... You wouldn't, like, you wouldn't want to open up too much, but... Like, Ashley is very, very trusting. She's opened up to practically everyone that we've seen so far. But we might as well just continue that trend. At least be mature about it. I mean, it is sensible that she's trying to control her memories and not let it get to her too much. And, you know, she's being emotionally mature, but she's... Like, both options there are emotionally mature ones. By saying nothing, she's conveying 
I don't want to think about it and it's for my own mental health that I choose to do so. But speaking about it openly and accepting the facts is also a, a form of, of maturity. It's like she's coming to terms with it, although she's already at terms with it. But yeah, the, the point I was originally driving at is, it's not a let's play if the focus is solely on the person playing and barely on the game being played to the point where you'll sacrifice the game's continuity to chop it up into little pieces just to make it make the commentary as entertaining as possible. I mean, commentary has to be entertaining, but the focus is commentating over the game, not commentating with a game. I don't know why I'm on this tangent. Yeah, just 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 have like a little side thing come in and let me choose for him because clearly we're playing as him. Oh, he believes us. Maybe he wouldn't have be left us if <laughs> maybe he wouldn't believe us if we'd said we didn't believe him earlier, but whether he's lying or not is immaterial. We're lying about believing him, but he thinks that we believe him. It's all stuff we're already uh, uh, blah, blah, all already aware of. I can so beautifully articulate my words. Sometimes I feel like my tongue is too fat. Is that just me? Like, like should, should I have some sort of tongue liposuction? Oh, that, that, that's an awkward combination of words. Anyway. So, right. Bit of a plot hole then. Why are you opening up about this to literally everyone on this campsite, but you've never mentioned this to your friends? Ashley, why are you like this? There we go. The, the, the truth comes out at last. So, he disappeared, he just wasn't kidnapped. Well, that seems more plausible. If you'd just not lied about that, then we would have had an easier time believing you from the outset. Plot twist, what if it's Ryan Gra-I, who is actually his father? No, I'm fairly sure that's not what happens. So... What's the significance of you waiting five years before looking for him, then? Eh? Hmm? Uh, what, what? First of all, why the whiteness? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's set in, like, rural America, so most of the characters are going to be white. But I mean, why the white background, and why is this, why is this relevant? And how, and how could you mess with the fourth wall? I mean, Dr. Robbins, I get, because he was telling us stuff that Ashley already remembered. The, the original point stands, why did he wait five years before going to look for his estranged father? I mean, maybe it's because of the age, because I think in this game he's like 12 or 13 and he would have been 7 or 8 at the time, but... Well... that That's... that's hugely mixed signals but surely you should have paid attention to what it was that was being said. If she's crying and shouting, surely you should listen to what she's saying rather than just acknowledging it as cr crying and shouting. Crouting. Shrying. Oh yeah, and she died, didn't she? So, wait. So did she only die recently then? Did you wait for her to die and then start looking for him? I'm kind of a bit lost in your timeline. But then again, we have no reason to care about your timeline because you're a lost child. We're, we're the we're the protagonists here. We're the one with the outlandishly coloured hair and the giant eyes. We're the one who actually matters here. Are we going to have even more exposition about your ass, uncle? As opposed to your uncle's ass. What what, what what's woeing suddenly? Are they mine? By any chance, might they be mine? Well, th th those look like suit shoes, so possibly not. So maybe it was Suit Guy, maybe it was Ryan, maybe it was Ranger Asgore. Maybe it was Jesus. <laughs> oh no, it, it's it's Sunglass. I, I'm going to call him that, but like, in my mind I'm spelling it S-U-N space capital G-L-A-R-S-E. I'm going to call him Sunglass. Because, like, sunglasses combined with us, it's a portmanteau. I don't remember what his name is. I don't remember what significance he has to the story, but... He is ominous and an asshole, therefore he's sunglass. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Tass. No, Das. I know what I mean. So we've got a message. But you just whipped this out in front of another human being. I'm pointing frantically at the screen. You're not supposed to show this to other people. And of course, but where's he gone? How could you be that absorbed in the screen? But yes, a, a subtle reminder of the objective we've been avoiding.
What, are we just going to abbreviate it to Matt now? Because Matt doesn't really sound right for a child his age. Like, Matt sounds like a nickname for, like, a mid-teenage or older. To the point where, when you get to, like, age 30 or so, Matthew only sounds right in super, super formal scenarios. And... Unless they were never Matt to begin with. I know what I mean, I'm not going to go into too much more detail because we're having yet more exposition. But like, I knew a guy called Matthew in high school, and he was always Matthew, never Matt. So it would be weird to refer to him as Matt at any point in his life. If you're Matt as a youth, then you kind of become Matt permanently at age 30 or so. This makes perfect sense to someone, I'm sure, but just not me. Or anyone listening to me, for that matter. And that, that's the second time I've got off on a tangent about names in this episode, isn't it? Oh, so we are finally going to convene once again with with the father. That is not not just just generally. We're, everyone in the world is going to just spontaneously converge on the lakefront, and we're just going to have some sort of fiesta. I partly censored that word, and again, it's a reference that only Super Alex 641 will get, and... Is he... Are you still watching this? Alex, if you're still watching, then... I don't know. Say so on Skype without me prompting you. Oh, and apparently this guy has a guy boner for us. Because he demands to be... Sam Hillman. That, that That's... That's not too far away from... Name... Mc, name McGuy Pants. And so that's what I'm going to call you. Name McGuy Pants. I don't remember what role he has either. Was he even? Ah, oh, yes, yes, he was the. He was the. I I keep glancing at his hat, and it looks like the Burger King logo, but it's not. Oh, joy! <laughs> to be fair, what are the chances of that? Might that be the same contest that we were planning to enter were it not for Dr. Robbins' interference? Well, we'll begin with the, the director. Not to be confused with the editor from Jazzpunk. Or maybe they are one and the same. Ah, yes. Oh, the, the one before Rex Alfred. We didn't. She's just an ass who likes to talk ass when she makes pompous face noises at us. As I said, on a scale of one to us, she is very arse. Oh, Judd. The guy with a really awkward name that, like, it, it, it sounds like, I don't, you're dropping something hev heavy and it just lands and goes, Judd. Like, I'm, I'm not hating on people who, who are legitimately called that. It sounds like it's short for something. Maybe it's because his real name is Gerald Fitzgerald and they're just like, no, that's dumb, we'll call you Judd. It's like a jarring thud. Judd. I swear I'm high when I record this commentary. And now I don't know what to say. I keep looking at the logo on Tommy's shirt, and I keep thinking it's like a chandelier or something. He was a fan of Seer before Seer was Seer. Well, no, she, she did release music before she went all artsy, so... Yeah, they're gonna be our rivals or something. Some somehow, somehow I doubt that. It's just a battle of the bands in one slightly rural part of America. It's not really gonna do you that many favors. Then again, I think there's like one stage school in the UK where if you, if you graduate from it, you're probably gonna become a famous artist. Like I think Adele, Larue, Little Boots. I think all graduated from there, or some. I know Adele did. I don't know about the others. Anyway. Well, good, so I could actually get some more gameplay in this episode. That said, I've been going for 20 minutes, and this series is 30 minute episodes because it's a bit more slow paced. By the way, does that format work with you lovely people? Always open to feedback, although it becomes slightly less relevant once this series is over, but nevertheless. I suppose feedback for future videos, it would be beneficial if you were to tell me, does 20 minutes work better for you, or 30 minutes? Or does it vary with the game? Am I doing a good, basically? Am I the win level at goodness with my stuff? That watercolour background, though, that is pretty. And another one of these! Wow. Oh, there's a clock tower. Are you going to react to that as well? Like, that's, that's twice you've just looked out at the lakefront and had a flashback. 
I'm assuming you're about to have a flashback with that very phallic-shaped clock tower. Well, surely you would have been able to see it from where you just were. Or, I, I don't know just how far we went, but yep, sure enough, second... Once again, looking at the lakefront, having an ass flashback. Do I say ass too much? Should I try to do something about that? Because that's a thing that I recognise that I do quite a lot. So she was in for Oh, wow. I just remembered that my mother was at a place at some point in time. My mother existed, I never would have guessed. But, I, I mean, I'm mocking her, but I, as I've said, what she's doing is perfectly valid and reasonable as a, you know, as a means of holding on to memories, and should we go this way? Uh, we have an objective, but might as well see what's down here. Oh, there's a tree on the map. Is this also flashback material? I know this is surprisingly important later, but I don't remember what for. Why is this on the map, though? It's, it's a tree. It's, it's, it's being a tree. I bet Nintendo Capri Sun would sleep here. Just an observation. Now, I'm surprised that nothing happened there, but then again, I'm also not surprised. I believe that... Is that the boathouse that's closed? There's another recycling machine. Oh, look who it is. Are we ever going to get to the bastard cottage? Are you having a little flashback of your own? Uh, I, I can't get past what, what what was that I called it before? Like 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 a, an ass weasel or something? <laughs> uh, no offense to asses or weasels. You're gonna break into the boathouse and do boat things. <laughs> Going to take some hose, bring them into the boathouse, and have a fantastic time with both. I I imagine you probably can just skip all this green text, but I'm showing off because I'm sharing the full experience of this game. So you waited an entire year to come back before breaking in. Oh, did they confirm that it's permanently disused then? I thought it was just closed for the moment. I don't remember. I'm going on stuff that I saw in episode 1 and vague fuzzy memories from like 2011. Bad people. Good grief. That actually kind of reminds me of... um. When I, I got Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the Pokemon games, when they were, like, pretty much when they were released, and then I just randomly stopped playing them, but not before establishing the headcanon that my Latios in Omega Ruby, like, he was really anxious about stopping Team Magma because the bad people are going to do bad stuff, and then uh, the the Lenoon on my team, who I, I, I gave him a really cute name, I, th I think I called him Evan, and I headcanoned that he was just Campus Christmas, and so I just have this headcanon of, um, this mental image of the entire team just sitting around a campfire on that that route just to the east of Moorville, Moville, the electric gym town. You know, that, that place where they introduced tall grass and, and the Pokemon Tropius. Just having a little campfire around there, and Evan just on Latios' back, just giving us a sort of shoulder massage, like, calm down, darling, we'll deal with them tomorrow. And Latios just like, but the bad people! I don't know, I, I ship it. I will say no more on the matter, because it's not even relevant. And I, I have not been reading any of this text because I'm just reminiscing about my yaoi Pokemon head cannons, apparently, which makes it sound a lot worse than it is. So we're having to go into the boathouse. Now, how much do you want to bet that we're going to attempt to go in, he'll try to use the ID card, it won't let him in, and then we'll have another task puzzle. Is this the thing we're doing right now? Are we going to do that now, or is it later? Oh, he's, follow oh, he's following us, I thought we had to interact with him. Oh, would you look at that? It's another task puzzle. Oh my god. Are you going to use the ID card and then be rejected and then have to rely on us to do a thing and then you'll find out about the task as well as the DAS? Because we're just breaking all the rules as it is. We are the rebels who do not support any of the establishment or something like that. I don't know. Temporarily closed, by the way. Bullshit. Of course, the task is reacting, but he's not supposed to know about it. But you just, you just fucking named him. You were told not to share this with anyone. You floppy dildo. That was a lot louder than intended. I don't have any flatmates, but nevertheless, you're not supposed to tell him. Well, I don't want to patronise him, so it, it is legitimately a secret. 
but just just trust us. It, it's like it's like a sonic screwdriver mixed with a Wii remote. So are we not are not allowed to use it? Oh, are you, are you an actual Hoovian? Because I'm okay with this. Yep, yep, they went there. Wow. Now, do we have to use this in front of him? Or do we have to wait until he's gone? Well, uh, yeah, th that seems a bit more... This seems a bit less underhanded than telling him to just close his eyes. Like, this just seems like the, the, the more rational option, because then we can covertly open the door without him looking, rather than straight up telling him, yes, we can open the door, we just don't want you to see. You know? Like, it, it it's technically more underhanded, but it seems a bit... It just seems like the right thing, so we can now... I was going to say, is there... Are we just going to have to come back later and open it when he's not around? Sort of like transforming into Wolf Link in front of human people in Twilight Princess. Which... I don't really see the point of them re-releasing that, but at least they're adding extra stuff to it. Because I continue to be very sad to this day that they didn't add a uh, Master Quest to uh, Majora's Mask 3D. Anyway, so, we're going to do two task puzzles in one episode. Holy shit. Holy Merry Christmas to my ding ding dong. So let's tass it up again. Twice in one episode. Fun times. What we got this time? One, two, A, B, three. It's the introduction of the three. So, point to the screen. One, two, A. B. Oh! Ah! I know what it is. I, I tried pressing 1 and 2 at once, I just remembered what the answer to the puzzle is. So, 1, 2, A, B. 1, plus 2. Like, the, the 1 button, then the plus button, then the 2 button, because 1 plus 2 is 3. This is what I meant when I said it gets really clever! And it's only up, up from here. It's so clever! Just... I c words cannot express just how in love I am with the puzzle mechanics of this game. So, yeah, we found the keycard. Show me the keycard. Oh, it, um, it evaporated when I used it, like in The Legend of Zelda, where you use a key on a door and it disappears. I'm surprised he didn't call us out on that. Oh, come on. You can quite clearly see that there's, uh, unless that's the door we came in by, there's another door that's open. And... Why did you not just walk around the building and come in that way? Or, like, is this the... Is that the way we came in? Or is that the way we came in? Which way did we come in from? So, wait, so... That is the way we came in from, but there's a door that's open that's right there. But, is this the other room? Oh, I couldn't tell if that was a wardrobe or another room, because I'm not really... I've not really been reading the text, because I'm a bit shit like that. And look at the time. Uh, we have time for one more long drawn-out cutscene, I think. Yay! I'm such a child. I am such a child. <laughs> Just see the word motorboat, and that's the first thing my brain goes to. Uh, what are we looking for? Well, there's a rope. It, it looks like it's takeable. Soggy cardboard sounds like a euphemism. As uh, tins of things. Oh, it's just paint. What's up here then? Apparently nothing. I don't remember what we're looking for in here. Unless... I think maybe we look at the boats on the walls and have another flashback? With that being the case... Uh... Uh, one cutscene and then I'll call it an episode, I think. Is a boat, and it's covered, but it's the right side up, so there's something could be hidden inside it, maybe. What's this here? <laughs> Member of staff, that's... That, that's two words for penis in one single expression. Wh why? Why have I suddenly come across all childish? Well, I don't remember exactly what do next, but I've not exhausted every possibility. But I think we'll tackle it in the next episode. So I have been and will continue to be tessellating hexagons. And next time we'll do more boathouse shenanigans. How has this taken half an hour? Well, whatever. See you then. And my batteries still haven't run out. Holy hell. See you next time.